Hello and welcome once again to Crazy Comics and Stories. It's me, your charming and delightful old Uncle Rap Bastard. And at the other end of the series of tubes and wires that we call the internets is Joe, a crazy writer. How you doing today, Joe? You know what I've been doing to keep myself occupied? Sometimes I count to a thousand, then back <laughs> down again. I usually get stuck on three. Well, that's good if you're counting up, but if you're counting down and you get stuck on three, I can see why somebody would slap you upside the head. <laughs> Wait a minute. Now, if you, if you hear Is someone... somebody else in the room? <laughs> special guest. There is a special, special guest. guest in the room. Dear yes. special guest, please sign in and let the people know who you are. Well, hello. My name is Sabrina Zaremba, and I go by the Geeky Pinup Redhead. And Joe is the one who discovered your art and everything else. So, well, Joe. Let's put it straight. It wasn't the art that caught my eye. <laughs> if you go to Facebook and check it out, it's Sabrina, and I'll spell the last name, Z-A-R-E-M-B-A. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are several of you, including, is there like an inactive account with you, or did somebody hijack you? Oh, wow. No, um, I actually had an inactive account from a few years back. It was just something I kept. But I made the okay. new one because I was trying to focus more on my pen up, more on my comic book knowledge, and more of all of that, pop culture. So basically, check her out on Facebook. And believe me, once you've done that, you probably won't care what Corey and I say the rest of this here podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the way it goes. And now, I have an Instagram, too, you guys. That's a little more than the Facebook. Which is? The Geeky Pinup Redhead. Anything and there else? you get pictures and you get yes. um, videos. And um, I, I haven't seen any art. It's just pictures and videos. And sometimes you are out about in the world. <laughs> I remember being out about in the world. <laughs> oh, those carefree days of two months ago. Oh, my God, yes. <laughs> I miss that, too. I've taken to lip syncing to popular music in my room and outfits at this point, out of boredom. <laughs> you know, and I, was telling, popular. I was telling uh, somebody, I, I forget who I told what, but I just had hip surgery over the winter. So mm -hmm. I was indoors for two months and I basically wasn't very mobile. And now these last couple of weeks, it's just like I back to what I did all winter. So to me, it's nothing new. It's, I mean, I'm, I'm faring pretty well, although we do take walks occasionally. We did go walk uh, around the block. We had a couple crappy days of weather, rain. Good Lord, up in northern Minnesota, they got like six inches of snow. But today was really nice, almost 60. Tomorrow's going to be nice, and then we get a couple more of rain. So, yeah, if I can get out and walk about, I don't know what it's like in your area if you're able to uh, at least get outside and, and get some sun. Oh, yeah, we've we've had some rain and we actually had snow. Uh, but the thing about it was, um, I, I guess I'm just taking this time to explore my inner dork inside of my lair, which is also my bedroom. And, uh, and see, that's what caught my attention was you, you do a live broadcast on Facebook and mm -hmm. I caught one. And as I as I listened, I was like, OK, not only you are stunningly beautiful, but you're a geek. I and am. then as you were talking, you were, you, you've got some uh, uh, scholarly credentials behind you. I do. I have been collecting since I was 11 years old. And um, I started with some Archie, and then I worked my way, way up to Big Two, and then I got into the Indies, and I kind of never stopped. It kind of saved me from some bullying in school. I used to look different. And um, it was like my escape to have these amazing adventures. And it helped I could draw, too, so I could actually kind of just mimic all of that. And it was just, like, this amazing world that I made for myself via, like, brick-and-mortar comic book stores. And now, that resonated with me, too, because I wasn't bullied or picked mm -hmm. on in school. I was, like, ignored. So I was never with the in crowd. I was never invited to things. But I read comic books. And so... Oh. That was kind of my escape. You know, the weekend was I'd, I'd go get my paycheck. I'd go to the comic store, get McDonald's and either go to work or go home and read comics all weekend. So that oh. was kind of my uh, 
my my escape, my my secret origin of comic books as well. We we all have one, honestly. And like the the best thing about reaching out into the comic book community right now for me, I used to always be like a bystander. Like I was just a chick in the stacks that you kind of didn't notice because I used to be a tomboy. And then it kind of became different for me. But then it was like I wanted to be more out and about in the community. And that's why I started the Geeky Pinup Redhead stuff, if only to connect with other artists and connect with my pop culture people and my comic book people. And kind of like we just we bounce off of each other and it's been freaking amazing. And I like to like let everyone know they're not just a number. Like, I legit read all of your DMs. I legit, that aren't pervy, FYI. <laughs> but I, I I do legit read the stories. And they resonate with people that kind of identify with my story. And that means the most. But then you, what also caught my attention is you've got, you went to college for this. I mean, you studied art. So you, you not only can talk to geek, but you can talk, you could hang with classic guys who uh, might be a little poo-poo-y towards the comic art. <laughs> I, here's the deal, like I did. I actually have my BA in art, and I took five levels of art history. Go me! But the thing about it was, like for me, like going into like back in the day, the Words and Pictures Museum in my state before it closed down was all comic book art. But I could go to another museum, and it would be like Renoir on the wall, and there was no differential for me whatsoever. It was all art. It was all amazing. It all gave me the feels. So. Comic book art and like like fine art and like all of that stuff, it's just subjective. But to me, it all falls under the same umbrella because it just makes me emote so much. It, it gives something so much to me. Now, you said that you started with the Archie comics. When did you start noticing the difference in art styles and who were the early artists that you were drawn to? Oh, wow. Um, well, I started with Archie comics, which were the little digest. OK, I, I used to go to a Walden Books and I would scoop those up like a dork as a kid. And then um, I found X-Men number one uh, by Jim Lee in, in the stacks. And that was kind of my my embracing the big two. And that's when I discovered X-Men. And I was 11. And the thing about it was because they were outcasts and because they were shunned by society for being something so different to like, like the so-called normal people, it kind of like talked to me because I struggled with being part of a crowd in school that I could not be part of. So I just needed to know more. So after the Jim Lee X-Men, I got into the Batman era. I got into the Superman era. I got into the indies like Cry for Dawn by Joe Linsner. I got into Chaos, Brian Polito. And Steve and Youth, Lady Death, um, She, Bill Tucci, Razor, Every Heart So. So I got into all the different eras of comic books. And because I love them so much, I they just left their impression on me like all my life. That I can just recollect it all. Well, I have to ask, because I've been reading the X-Men longer than that. One of the problems with the X-Men for me in the 90s is that everything was so convoluted that you couldn't make head. Half the time it's like, okay, but I think I've told the story before. I once drove my son out of the house when he asked me Cable's origin. <laughs> oh, my God. All those pockets. All no, those no, pockets. Well, okay, he's the son of an evil clone of, and then he sent to the future and, and after five minutes, he went, I, I have to go. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was it like the mother, Maddie Pryor? Yes. So it's the evil clone of Jean Grey, who was dead at the time. <laughs> mm -hmm. she, was the, she became legit, like, if I remember correctly, the Goblin Queen. Yes. And then Cable, as a baby, was sent to the future, was raised by Scott and Jean, who had time jumped into different bodies again. How, as an eleven-year-old, how did you not go? I, 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 I no. Wait a minute. What is, didn't didn't Jean die in X Men one one thirty seven? She got better. Yeah, but then she came. But no, that wasn't really her. It wasn't. No, it was. Um, it, the Phoenix took her form, and they found her at the bottom of the uh, East River, I believe. <laughs> in no, a cocoon. Like Oh, my God. No, um, well, the X-Men in the 90s, 
In fact, a lot of the 90s stuff. Um, the 90s Wait, for me was... Wasn't, wasn't Scott married to Madeline? How did he get back with Gene? Hmm. I, I don't want to get into that stuff. because it makes Scott no, Summers Wikipedia. into a real jerk. That would be <laughs> an entire podcast. Gene's alive. I guess I must leave my wife and child. <laughs> you got a lot to read. <laughs> Oh my god! But yeah, um, I I remember the X Men of the '90s, but like I kind of jumped out with the Jim Lee, Chris Claremont stuff. But then like a lot of the stuff, there were so many freaking X titles at one time, I couldn't eat it. There was like not enough allowance or straight A's in the world to afford everything on the on the stands because it was die cut covers. We're talking the era of chromium and weddings. And this and that. And it was like, I felt like there was 25 to 30 X titles per month at a time. And um, it, actually, as a kid, it burnt me out for a little while. Because. Um, com- no, go ahead. Oh, because comic books were just too much at one time. Like, there was just too much of a good thing. See, what I was going to interject is at that time is when I owned my comic book shop. So I could read everything and put it back on the shelf even though I collected very little X-Men at the time. And I think after a while, I just gave up. Every so often, I'll pick up something cheap uh, and try to read it, and I'm like, oh, sweet bejesus, what's wrong with this? It's it's either the art style is so incredibly cross-hatched, as everybody emulated the image guys, or the story was just like, I I think I I told Corey I picked up a maximum security crossover. It was when the okay. alien races of the universe that decided to dump their reprobates on Earth and make it a jail and uh, so kind of segregate it. And I'm trying to figure out what's going on here. Okay, Charles Xavier is, is hanging with mutant scrolls. Uh, Cyclops is dead. I really don't remember any of this. I remember the crossover, but I really don't remember how. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times I've gone to Wikipedia just to read. Okay, what happened? Oh, okay, that's what's going on. Now I can read the crossover. Right. No, I got you, because honestly, I kind of shied away from the X titles for a lot of years because of, like, the poor storylines or poor art in some ways. And then, like, I'm coming back to it just now. The X titles. I've always been collecting comic books, but the X titles I took a little, like, hiatus from. And the House of X, Powers of X is something that kind of brought me back to it. And I just got it in the mail, and I'm like, that's the hardcover, and I'm going to read up on it. So I guess from what I'm told, before I even pick it up and read it, it's it kind of refreshes everything we knew. But I yes. actually I actually hate I, – I hope it's not a reboot. I didn't hear it was a reboot reboot. Oh, no, no, it's not. Okay, too, because reboots, I just – that got old for me, too, with Big Two sometimes, like Zero Hour and things like that, New 52. I was just kind of like, ah, a reboot. And then everything erases something else. And then something else doesn't become canon anymore. And then I'm like, oh, God, I can't. I can't. I just need hard, fast, solid origins. And then take me away. Take me into their story all their lives. I'd say I'd say trust Hickman on this. The one thing and, and I know Corey and I talked about this. You don't have to read everything. Although if you can, it all kind of okay. ties in together. The larger story is much more fun, but don't feel like you have to read everything. I'm just reading anything Hickman writes because okay. in my opinion, he could write the phone book and I'd read it. And nice. uh, he's kind of the guy behind it. There's things I wish I'd have read uh, like X-Force. I started reading New Mutants. And I decided to back off. So mm-hmm. yeah, don't feel like you have to read everything. Uh, who knows? It might end up in a quarter box years from now. But uh, yeah, it's it's oh, and they are. I've got questions and they are answering them slowly. Uh, okay. Matter of fact, there's there's a big one. There's a mini series going on right now. Uh, Fantastic Four X Men dealing with Franklin oh, yeah. Richards. You mm-hmm. know, and it, it, I I don't even we we buy our stuff through discount comic book service, so things get shipped to us once or twice a month. So I don't even know where they're at now. I think number three is on the stand. Number four will be shipped whenever they get around to it. Oh, I mm. hate long, I hate long cliffhangers. But uh, yeah, it's it's a it's going to be amazing. It's a lot of fun. I don't want to say too much. I, I hate spoilers, 
So I'll, I'll quit with that. No, One other thing a, about I, Marvel, they don't reboot because the editorial staff has this firm belief that Marvel history continues. Mm. You may find out something happened differently in the past than you thought, mm-hmm. but they don't do reboots. And um, Tom Brevoort, who's one of the uh, executive editors there, he's kind of the keeper of continuity at this point. He's been working at Marvel since 92, 93. Okay. And a huge Jack Kirby fan. So he's still kind of active in the Jack Kirby fan circles and he'll talk about how you know every so often people will come in and want to pitch a reboot and he says no the marvel universe has a distinct history you can change parts of it if you've got a good enough story such as bucky didn't really die Mm. or daredevil had a girlfriend in college we didn't know about named electra Mm -hmm. but you can't say everything starts new right now they just they don't ever want to do that because they make so much money off the back stock (laughs) no right the back catalog for sure well well, thank you you guys because honestly i kind of like i said i got the house of x power of x hardcover the mark brooks direct exclusive and um i want to get the dawn of x like trades if only because it does collect the ones the twos the threes and kind of like keeps it a little cohesive kind of deal yep and i'm gonna i'm gonna actually try it out give it a good world because like i said x-men was lacking for some years and then you know i i'm i'm die hard i'm die hard okay i have x-men wolverine origin and i don't use it as a coaster it's actually in my (laughs) movie rack along with Electra, okay, the director's cut. I'm that dedicated to the craft. So even the X-Men movies, I sat through Dark Phoenix. And I did pay $19.99 on Voodoo, and there was no refund, yes. <laughs> but I but I do I do own it, and I do own all of the X-Men movies. Um, so I'm dedicated. I'm hard, but I'm hardcore. So I will sit through any of these like once or twice or 10 times and not be totally disappointed, except in X-Men Origins Wolverine. One of these days I can use it as a template to make circles in art. (laughs) Speaking of art, you've got a degree in art. Mm -hmm. How are you using that? Well, I actually was going to be an art teacher, but the thing about it was I'm best at like doing my freelance thing. So I do commission work um, on command or demand as people hire me and whatever have you. Command. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Go draw. Try this. <laughs> like just point at the table like with a skeletor hand. Draw this, red egg. Hey, hey, show like, me that trick you do where you draw. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, actually, I, I, I do draw commission work. So like I do the blank covers if people like want that. I kind of do all media because I did go to college. So um, I do oils. I do art, like freaking everything. Inks. I do my own sequential. Um, so I'm kind of a jack of all trades with art. So um, it's just not like, you know, loving everyone else's art. I make my own too. On command. <laughs> <laughs> so who are your biggest influences when you draw? Oh, wow. That's that's tough. I mean, honestly, because I come from a world of portrait art, because that was what I used to do in college for hire. Um, when I, I do my sequential stuff, I have a very, very realistic touch. So I guess Mike Mayhew to me, like Mark Brooks, that kind of stuff speaks to me right now. But growing up, my huge influence and my love was Joe Lindsner of Cry for Dawn and then the character Dawn. And a lot of people say, like, my look kind of emulates her a bit. I I personally don't see it (laughs) because I have red hair and boobs. But um, I I guess it's an honor to say because, like, like people will send me, like, a Dawn JPEG and say, this is you. And I'm like, holy (laughs) Holy crap, really? Thanks. But um, to me, well, hopefully like... hopefully your stories are a little more coherent than his. 
Oh, you know, here's something so sad. Listen, listen, this is something so sad. I collected his work since I was a kid. I was not allowed to buy Cry for Dawn. I was underage at the time, and my father bought it for me. It snuck me the bag, like, you know, like a 40 in a bag as a kid. Awesome. But he, was, he was like, Sabrina, it's art. You wanted it. She's bending over. You could see her butt crack. Here, take it. It didn't matter. I was, it didn't matter. I was 12. He loved me that much, and it was art. And it mattered. But um, I guess, like, you know, looking at it now, I guess my pinup does kind of, like, emulate that style, maybe. And But the stories, uh, looking back at it, Cry for Dawn was amazing to me. It was an anthology series. It had a few hands in the pot. But when Dawn and Lucifer's Halo came, and then Three Tears, and then also, da- like, Return of the Goddess, and things like that out of order, um, yeah, someone pointed that out to me who worked with him. And they said, have you ever sat down and really, really read them? <laughs> and I said, yes, I have. But then I thought on it and I said, ooh, pretty pictures. Yeah. But, <laughs> but then, and then I thought, oh, my God, what have I been doing with my life? And I had to reevaluate things because I legit have a closet of this guy. So he's not in the closet, mind you. I mean, like, I have long boxes of Cry for Dawn and Dawn, like, memorabilia. But, um, yeah, someone pointed out that the stories didn't make sense. And I sat there for 10 minutes, like, staring through space. Like, it made me question my entire life. (laughs) (laughs) I I remember the last miniseries that came out, I was reading trying trying to read it i should say and i said you realize of course he could throw all these pages up in the air reassemble them in any in whatever order they fell and they'd make as much sense yeah but i think like that's how neil adams is now too joe i defy you to tell me what the plot is (laughs) of uh, neil adams's uh, latest batman story uh let's see uh it's uh let's see he visually ingested as a child uh yeah let me get back to you on that one <laughs> <laughs> there oh my God. Who can get away with that wait is there a bat Martin penis story. involved no that's a different <laughs> batman miniseries oh, damn. i thought i had <laughs> that is batman damned and there we go and the- yeah I didn't do anything. I, you mentioned penis. There we go. I was Get our explicit rating for another decade. <laughs> that, that's the uh, miniseries that got Dan DiDio uh, fired. So. No. <laughs> Batman circumcised. Oh, my God. And he was swinging. Swinging. <laughs> Mighty cold in that back cave, I'm telling you. Oh, my God. I didn't even get to see it. I have the hardcover, and it was edited from, like, the print, I, the separate. I'll, I'll scan you a picture of it later and send it to you. If you don't mind a dick pic. A back yeah, well, pic. well, actually, you'll have to add, like, a Dick Grayson pic, and it'll kind of even out. And that'll be I actually good. I right, but I don't have him uh, being uh, dick picked. You can give me dueling yeah. dicks. Give me Batman, and then give me Dick Grayson. Wait, do you all like right, all right. Let's get this <laughs> Sorry, back on track. <laughs> That's my job in the is to derail things, by the way. So let me oh, score one on my card. Got it. Nice. Okay, so, so uh, X-Men, time. Dawn, do you, do you got any DC love? Is there any DC books that you like? Yes. Um, I was a huge fan of the J.H. Williams, the third run on Batwoman. And that was part of the new 52. I really, I don't, you know, the show I didn't get into, you guys, but the the book I very much did before the J.H. Williams the third and the, the the writer team left. But um, Wonder Woman, see, for me, I guess, like, I always revisit the old catalog classics, like The Killing Joke by Alan Moore and things like that, because I don't know, like, I, there's a lot coming down the pike now. Like, I know they do black label stuff that I kind of, like, am gravitating towards, like Harleen by Stefan Sedgwick and The Batman Damned by Brian Azzarello. But um, I don't know. I'm not sure. I was always into, obviously, the Vertigo stuff. Um, Alan Moore on Swamp Thing and um, 
Brian um, Bolland and all, all of it. Stardust, Neil Gaiman. Yeah. So I'm a, I'm a fan. I'm an equal opportunity lover of many comic books. So DC Marvel, for me, it was kind of not even a choice. It's like whatever made the better book, the art, the story, it really didn't matter, the banner. I just kind of loved it all. So how do you buy the comics you do? What, do you have a comic shop? Do you do it online? Do you go um, like we do, plow through the previews every month and look for the good stuff? Well, uh, the thing about it is in my city, we have one brick and mortar. So it is hard, getting harder for them to order out kind of things because they are small. So I do order online. I go through Midtown sometimes. Um, but I try to support my local comic book stores if I'm in areas of, you know, brick and mortar buildings. But I mostly go on Midtown Comics and get my stuff there. And um, Amazon, sometimes I'll hook myself up with some trades if they have a sale. But really, other than that, I try to support anyone that actually is just based in comic books. Uh, that's just a seller of comics. And if that's online or in store or whatever, I try to stay away from like the big wigs who have many departments and then just comics. Because right now, comic books are in jeopardy, <laughs> you know. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of something that's been on my mind with the whole diamond thing. So we're not really sure of the landscape that's going to come out of all this um, when we get them out the other side. Um, so I've been actually writing my blog. I have a blog, you guys, and I've been kind of trying to tackle that a little bit with my first entry Where about. I was going to say drop the, uh, the the website for it so we can look it up. It's also, du dude, I'm, I'm like not imaginative. It's also the Geeky Pit of Breadhead blog, and I, I can't say the website. It's so freaking long, but it's <laughs> through Wix, okay? And it's actually in my description on Facebook and on my Instagram. But, um, and it'll be it in was the just, notes of the show. Yes, thank you. I don't have to like like spell it all out in like this linear no, line no, of no. many numbers and, and letters. But um, my first entry was addressing the whole Diamond Comet distributors decision and whatever have you, and um, how the landscape may look after all this is over. And I've been trying to talk to other creators and other comic people who actually have shops, and um, we're going to be working on some online conventions. We're going to be working on some um, some different kind of things, doing some variant covers and all of this. But my thing is, like, comic books have always been for there for us growing up. And we need our heroes more than ever. And right now, it's kind of, like, disappearing a little bit. That joy you have in life during this time, those little pressures, and comic books being a huge one for the community. And I, I kind of like, you know, Marvel, DC, Image, those are going to kind of just take a hiatus. And well, I, I thought... I have a list okay. of what all the publishers are doing right now. Mm -hmm. So since this has come up, I thought maybe we would go over what, what each of the publishers are doing right now. Mm -hmm. And then what we can do as fans to help comic shops. Because the publishers... The, the the major publishers are going to be fine. Right. Yeah, they're owned yep. by big ass corporations anyway. Well, so for IDW, they they lose a few million dollars every month every anyway. So it, what, what, what's a few more million to them? But I thought I would go over what the publishers are up to. I've been keeping track of this. Mm -hmm. So first off, with Diamond, um, there was a rumor going around that they were being looked at for purchase by Penguin Publishing Distribution. Steve oh. Geppi came out today and said that that rumor is not true. However, they are laying off employees right now. Oh, just because they're being laid off doesn't mean they're gone for good. It's just there's no work for you right now. Um, and they have extended the dates on recently due orders for April titles. So normally the um, publish the uh, stores would have to get in their orders now. That's been delayed. Um, because I'm not a retailer, I don't have the dates, but it means that the retailers can kind of wait to see you know, how things are going to fall. 
Action Lab Comics has said that their digital titles will be released as scheduled. Aardvark Vanaheim, which is Dave Sim, actually put out a free coronavirus Cerebus in Hell comic book that you can download. Um, Ahoy Comics, we read their press release last week. They have also said that they, um, no digital comics this week. However, they reduced the prices of all their digital collections. So if you go to ahoycomics.com, you can get um, the stuff that they've already published at a reduced rate. Alterna Comics, they're the ones who are selling the comics for 99 cents. They are delaying all publication. However, they will still be shipping out mail order. Archie Comics is going to be releasing their general market titles digitally. And um, comics from April, May, and June are all going to be 100% returnable to comic shops. Digital sales of direct market aim titles are then stopped, and general market sales, the digest that you talked about, those are still going out on time to bookstores and grocery stores and things like that. Aspen Press, who does Fathom, um, they have suspended all publication indefinitely. Boom Studios says that no digital comics will be released until print distribution resumes and their books will be fully returnable through June, and they're putting together a retail support program. Also remember that Boom is part owned by Fox, which is now owned by Disney. Mm. Um, Dark Horse has ceased all direct market publication. No digital comics will be released until print distribution resumes. Their printer has closed. Same with DC, their printer has closed. Um, print comics, they are looking for a new source to print the comics, and they will, um, as soon as they've sourced that, they will con they will go back to printing because they do print they do sell through regular distribution and bookstore distribution. Um, Dynamite has delayed titles and increased their discounts and made all of their books returnable, but they are going to continue to publish the select. Um, some of their collections digitally for people to download. Humanoids and IDW are both delaying all comics for at least a month. IDW is making all of their comics returnable for the foreseeable future. Image has made all of their books returnable and is delaying and staggering their schedule. No digital titles will be coming out. Marvel has increased their discount to retailers and given Diamond better terms of business. They have also said to both DC and Marvel have told their um, freelancers, keep working, no delay and you're getting paid. Mm. Um, let's see, Oni Press is making their comics returnable. Rebellion, which publishes 2000 AD and all the Judge Dredd stuff in England, they're gonna keep printing. Whether that stuff makes it to the U.S. is, um, I, I imagine that's going to be delayed. They could always use the Concord. Wait a minute. Um, <laughs> TKO, which is a weird publishing group anyway, where they publish an entire series at once. And you can buy it either as individual comics, trade paperback, or digital on the same day. What has happened with them is if you order their stuff online and put in the name of your comic shop, 50% of what you spend on that comic will go to whatever comic shop you name, gotcha. which is pretty amazing. Um, Valiant Comics has told everyone to quit working until the end of July. Vault Comics is delaying all titles. Viz Media, which does manga, has released no information. Um, they've already, they have no digital titles listed from them for the next week or so, but most of their sales are through bookstores and um, Amazon anyway. And those are the publishers that we have heard about. Mm -hmm. um, if you go to your favorite comic creators, many of them are doing online stuff. Buzz has been doing a, every weekend he's doing a Buzz convention where he draws and auctions stuff off and um, tells stories and takes questions. It's mostly on Facebook Live. Um, Sabrina, 
Valen no Serena Valentino, who is um, someone whose works I've loved forever. Um, she actually transitioned out of comics and is now doing Disney novels where she writes about the villains. She is going to start doing um, Instagram reading of her new novels. Ooh. And there are a number of artists who are setting up cameras so you can watch them draw. Mm -hmm. So um, have you heard of any other, you were talking about online conventions. I know that, um, what was it, uh, the Emerald City had a whole bunch of stuff. WonderCon had a bunch of stuff. Um, what are some of the plans that you've heard of? Well, actually, like, I'm working with um, a few friends on, like, doing some, like, variant covers and, like, things to kind of fill the gap right now with some maybe new content that's, like, actual paper, you know, like, paper copy. And, you know, um, just actually some online comic cons um, that, even for kids, that don't have the opportunity to go to the camps, like, for conventions, like, cosplay conventions and things that they have going. I'm working with an old friend to get some stuff together so kids can access the Facebook Live and do their cosplay or, like, you know, just watch it and have guest stars and cosplayers and, like, kind of like a mishmash of everything so they don't feel like they're missing out from being stuck in. So it's kind of like all in the works uh, right now for all of that. Um, I know my friend Matt DeRoma is working on um, AnimeCon uh, online, and that's going to be, I believe, April 4th and 5th. I can give you dates and a link for it. But if he actually... Oh. I was going to say, that that would have been two days ago. This will come out Monday. The, oh, uh, there we go. Yeah, yeah there we are. Damn, damn. But no, but there is sure more. There will be more. There is. There's very um, much more in the works. Another place where you could get some comics, and especially indie books, if you go to comicsbeat.com, which is really about the only trusted news source now for comics, they have a free comic every day. It's called A Year of Free Comics, where they publish the first issue of a new series. And they they actually did it all last year as well, and they may have done it years before that. But every day they have a new comic, usually an indie or a self-published book. Uh, Joe, on the other hand, actually made it to a comic shop before here in Minnesota. We were told uh, not to leave the house. That was uh, before Joe. that happened. I'll talk. I'll talk about. <laughs> Sorry, Corey, Corey drones on. I tend to take a nap. And chew on milk oh until my. God. I, I, I gotta get that. Oh, I gotta get it together. No, uh, talk about oh, that get freaking. Um, I okay. will say one thing. As an ex-retailer, listening to everything you talked about, to me, utter butt kiss, because none of that is going to help me stay in business, especially uh, if they're going to. I don't, you know, and I don't, I don't know how much digital comics affect online, uh, you know, real sales. I don't think. I suspect they're two separate markets. I don't think people who are real big on digital comics are prone to walk into a comic shop and buy things and vice versa because I'm an old fart and I'm not really big on digital comics. I'm uh, not but, either. I mean, I look at the mechanics going on and even this big multi-trillion dollar bill that got passed to help small businesses. But kiss. You're offering me loans at a time when I'm not even sure I can pay what I owe now. And now I'm going to put loans on top of that uh, for good. I mean, even Macy's just laid off almost everybody working for them now. And they're definitely not a small business. So, yeah, I don't see a lot of love coming from the government. I don't see a lot of love coming from uh, anybody. I know personally from working with Diamond Comics, if uh, uh, stuff hit the fan, they are more than willing to help out. And I'm talking about a guy who owned a comic shop right during 9-11. I called him uh, almost within days of that happening. And I said, dude, I need some help here. I just got a $10,000 order and I sold maybe 200 bucks and they were more than willing to help out. So, I mean, say what you will, Diamond will work hard to keep it going. But really, until situation gets normal until printers are up until people can get back to work and not worry about uh getting sick uh we just got to write it out and uh, again I'll, I'll talk about some of the stuff i ran out ran into when i 
took a took a quick tour of some local comic shops before everybody was stay in place for God's sakes. Actually, I think we got a stay at home order, and unless it's an essential business, and of course comic shops, much. I, I know us three and all of you out there listening in podcast land will disagree are not considered essential. <sighs> liquor stores are, are. Go figure. Yeah, liquor stores, definitely. Matter of fact, I just had some fireball before I started. <laughs> well, Joe, there's a rumor. And, I didn't uh, start it. And uh, I, I want both of your takes on this rumor that I'm hearing from comic creators of what Marvel and DC are planning on doing to kickstart things once everything opens back up. Mm-hmm. Do it! Do it! Marvel versus DC. Whoa. Only if it matters. I mean, I read that old Marvel versus DC, and it's painful. Although it is funny when uh, Spider-Man and Superboy meet each other, and Superboy says something like, ah, tell me about it. You don't know what it's like being a clone. And I think at the time, Spider-Man was a clone. But, uh, yeah, I mean, go ahead, what if, black label this thing, and just, you know, keep it outside the normal realm and just have fun with it. I have seen a lot of people suggest things we've talked about, like, uh, and I'll give a Joe prize to whoever can find this. Take two major characters, switch them in the universe. So my my pick was Spider-Man, you hide in the DC universe for a year. Superman, you're in the DC universe for a year. And you got to figure out how to get back. But, uh, I, you know, I'm a, I'm, we, we were talking earlier about, uh, I think we alluded to like events and things, mostly like X-Men things where they had big crossovers. I'm, I'm a sucker for that crap. So right. I may not buy all the tie-ins. I usually wait for yeah. the omnibus that has everything. Wait. But, you know. I, I'm having a it? recollection of something. Mm-hmm. It was, it was a team up. Many, many years ago, I want to say the 80s, but I had got it in a long box once upon a time. It was like the new Teen Titans versus it. And I think it was X-Men. It was a crossover back in the yes. day. Like, I oh, love yeah. that. And it was George Perez. Oh. I think it was something. No. Yeah, I remember that. Walt Simonson drew it. Oh, my God. Walt Simonson. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Oh, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. One of the best of all the crossovers. Uh, that they did. Plus it was in comic book size. So you didn't have to worry about the tabloid size, trying to keep it in good shape. And if you could keep it in good shape, those tabloids, there were some serious bucks. I had, I always tell Corey, I always tell Corey the story. That was one of my Holy grails growing up. Cause I started in 1978. And when I saw a picture of Superman versus Spider-Man, all my brain exploded. And I think my comic shop finally found me one. I think the only other thing that got me that excited was uh, a what if number one. Uh, what if Spider-Man had joined the Fantastic Four? And, you know, nowadays he did. But, you know, back then, oh, man, those two, I hunted high and low. And, you know, nowadays with eBay, Amazon, calling, using the interwebs, you can find it. But, boy, back in the, in the heyday where you, you had to hope somebody had it or go to a con or – you know, I was 12 years old. I couldn't hop across town to other comic stores. But, yeah, no, that that uh, that was so much fun finding that. And I think the, the X-Men New Teen Titans was probably uh, the only other one other than the, the classic JLA Avengers that uh, Puzak and George Prez did. Uh, that, that, those are about the only three in my brain that actually hold up pretty good. Oh, me too. I, 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 like, I just struck me when you guys said about the crossovers, and it was not, it wasn't canon. It was fun, you know. And if something like yeah. that happened, like you said, it was fun. It was kind of something to just kind of like a what if of the whole universe of comic books. Yeah, so don't make like it canon. Totally relevant. Oh yeah, yeah. Don't don't make it canon. Just do a a standalone twelve issue, so you don't have to muck up everybody else's plans for whatever books they're doing and they have dropped hints i guess in uh doomsday clock in in thor and i had totally missed it in thor about a crossover that allegedly they were working towards in the future although with all the change at dc i think uh that might be out the uh, door but if you're going to make a canon you know this would be a perfect time to do it right 
Right. And there is a character owned by both Marvel and DC, you know. Oh. Ah, they Does never Joe that. know? They never access that. Never happened. <laughs> There's a character named Access that was created in Marvel vs. DC in the 90s, which was created because after oh, um, the comic book That's that collapsed. big guy with the axe, right? He goes around and axes people? Oh, no, that was no. a gritty time. No? Oh, the body spray guy. Yeah, yeah, Axis body spray. <laughs> when um, the bottom fell out of the comic market in the 90s, Marvel and DC got together and did Marvel versus DC, which gave us the four part Marvel versus DC and the, um, what was that? The amalgam, amalgam line. Oh, the amalgam line is that was worth the, the, Mar- the Marvel versus DC. Maybe, maybe that's how you start out. Uh, the last Ooh. we saw of the amalgam universe, I believe it was in a little golden ball that, uh, I don't know if it was Dr. Fate or Dr. Strange arranged. To save. So basically, you could just have that ball like be in the background of like a Doctor Strange comic, or I don't even know. Justice League Dark's probably the most mystic thing going on in DC Universe. And just there's your starting point. Have the Amalgam Universe break free, and Marvel DC has to has to put it back in their little hole again. Holy cow! I gotta stop giving away these million dollar ideas. <laughs> I was just going to say, I'm not going to see what I'm talking to you more, right? <laughs> We're like, where'd you get that million-dollar ID? idea? Oh, well, there, there was this podcast. That, shh. Yeah. Oh, they steal stuff from us all the time. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, we, tried to, we tried to ask President Obama onto our podcast. What's he do? He goes off and starts his own. <laughs> And I promised oh I wouldn't ask anything about politics. I wanted to know about his uh, collection of Conan and Spider-Man from the 70s. Um, George Perez has retired, so so who should draw it? Ooh. I know who yeah. I'd like to see, but who would you guys like to see? I know who I would like to see. And who's that? I, Joe, if Joe wants to go first, you know, but um, I'll just throw it out there. Mark Brooks. That'd be good. I'm I'm loving the covers of his X Men Fantastic Four stuff, and then he does some of the cover work for the House of X Powers of X, and then some of the like X Men. I got a Black Queen by him, but he's really amazing at group shots and things like that, and those sweeping scapes of many characters. So I can imagine something pretty amazing from him, like from Marvel and DC, like mushing together. And he works for both, actually. So yeah, it would be kind of perfect. So how so about you think you know? like have him do the main series? But uh, I kind of le- I keep falling back to the last issue of uh, Young Justice where they had different artists do different things, and I got to see like Mark Grell do, or Mike Grell do Warlord again and and different styles. I would like to see that as long as you can get this thing out on time and mm-hmm. not. Wait. That's why I think the standalone would be the best way to do it. But it would be fun to just get anybody who wants a piece of the action involved. Uh, and, you know, you got to have 500 variant covers with Jim Lee having <laughs> at least one. <laughs> oh, my God. Variant this covers. is your one in one million cover. Oh, <laughs> I, well, I'm I think you can have there. all of these different kind of spinoffs for artists to do the kind of stuff they want. But when I was thinking about this, first thing I thought is the book has to be out on time. It cannot be late. Oh, absolutely. And the second is it has to be somebody who's worked at both companies and draws both characters really well. Mm. And only one name came to mind. Oh, the suspense. Mark Bagley. Mark oh. Bagley. Mark Bagley uh, did um, Ultimate Spider-Man for almost a decade. Then he went over to DC and he did the Trinity Weekly book. Mm-hmm. Um, he's he did um, you name it. He's done it at Marvel. He's done some work at DC. But here's the thing: um, Ultimate Spider-Man came out 18 times a year. Because he was getting it done so fast, they said, well, it's selling well. Why not just put out more issues? 
Wow, okay. The man is a speed machine. His art is really good. That's very, and, very clean. You can recognize yeah. the characters just by looking at them. Go check out, uh, like Corey said, the Ultimate Spider-Man, any of the issues, and you'll see what we're talking about. And this is a book that after it's done, you know, get that thing in a hardcover and a trade paperback and put it in every bookstore in America. Mm-hmm. 20 years ago when they did it in the 90s, it it was just for comic fans. Now everybody knows Marvel and DC. So when you say, how would you like to see Batman versus Captain America? That means a lot more than it did in 1996. Right. So those are my suggestions. Bring back the Ultraverse! (laughs) Oh my god! Oh my god! You know, like, you just gave me a flashback to the Ultraverse and Malibu. I had a favorite character from that. I never forgot her. Mantra. Oh, oh yeah. that was awesome. Yes. Oh, my God. Adam used did some, like, Mantra, like, art and stuff, like a cover or two or something. Oh, my God, the Ultraverse. Holy crap. I haven't thought of that in years. Oh, I but I remember. It. I'm you still re- trying to get my complete set together and I've got all sorts of the different variants, the hard to find numbered ones and things like that. Plus, as I've said in previous podcasts, if you ever read the Ultraverse Avengers, Avengers Ultraverse, they let off. It'd be another perfect way to bring it back because the two universes, the governments were aware of each other. You tell me somebody isn't going to do a preemptive strike against the other one. In this case, it would have to be the Ultraverse get destroyed and then have all those characters come over. Well, there are certain ones that might not be able to come over because a lot of them creator-owned. And uh, uh, I believe a felon owns half a prime. So they might not want to use that one, (laughs) even though our our good buddy uh, Len uh, Straczynski. Yeah, he owns half of it, and I would I know I would love to see part of it just because of uh, for Len's sake. <sighs> yeah, yeah, we love I love me my Ultraverse. I I yeah. do remember the Ultraverse very well. Now well, they brought back New Universe and sunk it somewhere into the Marvel Universe. Isn't there something going through Avengers right now? Star brand. Yes, the star brand. Every universe has a star brand. That was in Hickman's Avengers. Come on, man. Come on, I know. Man. Yeah, but I'm not up on my current Avengers. Me neither. I'm oh. only up on the current X-Men stuff, guys. So, your comic shop is in trouble. What we did last week, Joe and I recommended a couple things that you could order from your local comic shop. Uh, especially since most people, not me, get to just kind of hang out at home for a while, not me. So, (laughs) Joe, what two books would you suggest that people order from their local comic shop that they may have missed? Hmm. It's hard to say because if, if you could take a picture of me, I am literally, with the exception of facing my laptop, surrounded by graphic novels. Uh, which two in your in your big pile? In which my two piles. that people might have missed? Uh you mean well recently? Yeah, recently that their comic shop could have because <clears throat> they're not going to be getting new stuff. So this is stuff. The way you could keep your comic shop alive is to buy what they have in their inventory because they've already paid for it. Oh, I'm trying to remember what I didn't mention last week. Ah. Uh, well, you know, we're, we're, we're geeks for omnibuses, so if you can afford to uh, buy an omnibus from your comic shop, uh, they, they'd probably uh, get down on their hands and knees and thank you. Uh, I got proof of that, but we'll get we save that for geeking. I would <laughs> say uh, if, if you've heard us blather on and on about series like Sin Cities, uh, Sandman, Walking Dead, uh, Saga. Saga is a good example. I have never read Saga. I've got volume one somewhere in my pile over here. And my goal was just to read it. Well, if it ever pops out in an omnibus, I know they're on hiatus. uh, I would buy it that way. But uh, those books right there would be a good one to uh, start on. You know, Sandman was mentioned earlier. That's a a great one to start out on. Uh, 
Uh, so th- those would be I'm, – I'm talking like classic perennials that, that you know you're not going to uh, lose on. If you're talking just sheer one-shots, uh, I always go back to Marvels, Watchmen, uh, Infinity uh, Crisis. Wait, Infinite that Marvel? Crisis. Infinite, thank you. One's Infinity, one's Infinite. Oh my God! I just gave him the name Infinite Infinity <laughs> Crisis. No way! Yeah. Didn't Sarah? Didn't Sim do that one as a parody? Never mind. So yeah, that would be my my guess. And I don't know, Corey, is this is is Diamond totally down? I mean, so the star system is pretty much gone. No, they will still ship stuff that's in inventory. Okay, because mm-hmm. uh, like I said, I had a devil of a time just finding uh, Jason Aaron the complete collection Thor. I think so far two volumes are out with the third one ordered. So, uh, you know, pick up something like that. I'm giving Marvel and DC a lot of love. Go to DC, go to Dark Horse and, and ask for Empowered by Adam Warren. Holy moly, just some fun art, awesome stuff. Uh, I've got volume 10 here in my grubby little hands, which I've yet to read. But uh, there's just a couple off the top of my head. And I'm just talking about things I can see in eyesight. Lord knows what I got buried behind these piles. I'm, I'm scared to touch them because they'll probably just fall on me. <laughs> a jank floor. Jenga. Kind of sag. Eventually, then they'll end up in the basement. They'll be fine. <laughs> How about you, not if they Serena? Fall through the, not if they fall through a hole in the floor. <laughs> uh, you know, some of those omnibuses are load-bearing. I don't want to remove them necessarily. <laughs> Oh my God. Um, I guess, I guess for me, I would say to support your local comic book store during this time, fill the gaps in your collection with long boxes in the store. Go finding the things that you were missing all this time and buying new material coming down the pike. Um, buy hardcovers, buy graphic novels, fill your carts <laughs> while you're in there. Go for, the for those Jim Lee variants up on the wall for a hundred bucks. <laughs> Exactly. There's 27 of them. Buy them all. <laughs> like a one in a thousand. Go buy it. You need it. You need it right now. You don't need food. You need that. So honestly, like just um, just fill gaps in your collection. Anything you can do to go inside of your local comic book store and buy just like things that you don't have and you want is keeping their doors open. After all of this kind of deal, when all this kind of settles, the, the, the bounce back has to happen. So definitely just fill, fill the void with the things that you really wanted all this time and you were putting it off and just buy back catalog stuff. And it's it's all win. It really is. Support your retailers. I'm going to give two suggestions and then an idea for you to go to your comic shop if you just don't know. Um, first, last week, there was the Daredevil Mark Waid Chris Samney Complete Collection. It, com- it um, collects all 12 issues of their Black Widow story. Ooh. And I guarantee you haven't read it because it sold very poorly. But come on, it's Mark Waid and Chris Samney hot off the run on Daredevil. Um, it's an excellent, excellent book. You don't need to know anything about Black Widow to pick it up and read it either. It's a perfect book for the upcoming movie. And Chris Samney's art is always a joy. I have loved him since he did his Thor run with uh, Roger Landridge, gosh, almost a decade ago. Um, And his run with Mark Wade on Daredevil was you know, top notch, and they continue that with their Black Widow. The second is a book that I've talked a lot about. It's an it's cheap for what you get. A fifty dollar hardcover called Choke Gasp, the best of EC Comics. This is um, about as thick as one of the thinner Marvel omnibuses, and it is the best of EC Comics. EC published Mad Tales from the Crypt. Weird Science, Weird Fantasy, Two-Fisted Tales, Frontline Combat, Shock Suspense Stories, Crime Suspense Stories, um, Haunt of Fear, Crypt of Terror, um, the best drawn comics in history. And if that book is uh, sitting on the shelf at your local comic shop, you giving them 50 bucks for it is going to make them happy because they just made 50 bucks. And it's going to make you happy because you've got one of the greatest collections I would say, of all time. 
the second thing is here in Minnesota, our shops are you can't you can't shop. So email them, and if you don't know what to get, just say, hey, here's three comics I like. Recommend a few trade paperbacks that you have in the store. And pick them up because, hey, you're going to be home anyway. Why not try some new stuff? Your comic shop is, first off, their shelves are probably full. And every dollar you spend is profit to them at this point because they've already paid for this stuff. And no new stuff is coming in. The second thing is, if the more they've got money coming in, the more they can continue to be a going concern. And then maybe they'll, you know, they might just go, you know what, this is a good book, but it's been sitting on our shelf for a year and a half, two years. And you've overlooked it because you haven't thought of it or you don't know anybody or you haven't read a review of it. It's a win, win, win all around. So contact your local comic shop. If they're still open, go ahead and ask them, hey, I need some suggestions. Let's say normally you spend 50 bucks a week on comics. Go in for the month, spend $200. That's your comic budget because Marvel and DC, they're not publishing anything. So it's not like you're going to be getting a huge stack of books in a month. You've still got comics. You've got these big, thick trade paperbacks to read while you're home watching Tiger King and going, these people are nuts. Oh, God, I can't do that. Do not bring up Tiger King, please. I have seen too many memes today of Carol Baskins. I am <laughs> set for life. <laughs> I was like, I can't with these. I, like, my friend literally wrote, is this a mockumentary? I said, no. sadly, no. <laughs> these are real people and this really happened. And then, so, yeah. So just help out your local comic shop. Um, we've got 451 episodes of suggestions. We've got episodes where we go, here's our favorite runs of these books. Um, another thing that I would suggest, if your comic shop has any Marvel epic books, that's the big, thick collections that are $39.99, and they publish anywhere between 20 and 30 comics in a single book, you're going to get a complete run with all the tie-ins of Marvel. It's mostly Silver Age, but they do have some Bronze Age books out. Um, matter of fact, I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't have the, uh, Black Panther book, the first Black Panther, um, gosh, what's it called? Well, it's the first Black Panther epic collection. Um, you need to buy it now. It's very densely written, so it's going to take you a few days to get through it, even if you don't do anything else. Some amazing art by Billy Graham. And when you read it, you're going to go, oh my God, Rich Buckler really can draw. I thought he just uh, would swipe from Kirby. No, Rich Buckler could draw him when he wasn't told to be swiping from Kirby or um, John Buscema. So those are my suggestions. Didn't I tell we you, Sabrina, other... he, would fit, he would fit Kirby in here somewhere. The guy <laughs> who loves his Kirby. Just don't get him going. we we'll here for another couple hours. Prophecy fulfilled. <laughs> I work at Kirby into every episode. Just like I work these guys, our sponsors. Believe it or not, kids, this here podcast has sponsors, and that sponsor since day one is DreamHost.com. DreamHost.com is the best bar none web host in the whole known universe. And if you need a website, head on over to DreamHost.com, put in code CRAZY, that's K-R-A-Y-Z, and get $20 off your first year. Now, if you would like to advertise here on any of the Solitary Rose Network podcast, you can just email me at solitairerosenetwork at gmail.com, subject advertising. Also, head on over to eBay and look for user Crazy, K-R-A-Y-Z, that's Joe Crazy Writer, who's always telling us about the eBay in every episode of Crazy Comics and Stories. If you would like to contact us, you can do so. You can Give us a call at 
952-856-0519. Leave a message and we'll play it on the show. Or you can send us an email at solitairerosenetwork at gmail.com. Thanks. Oh. And yeah. Yeah, now, Sabrina, too. you do your show, what, every Sunday night? I'm trying for every Sunday night. I kind of would like, I don't, there's a deal. I think a lot of people um, kind of gravitate toward the like, photography skills of things, and they kind of forget that I do know comic books. But um, I, it's every Sunday night, usually at 6.30 p.m. when I can. I try to keep it steady. If it's not every week, it's every two weeks. Eastern, by the way. Eastern Standard Time, yes. And it's so, usually... Uh, those of you in Germany. Yes. I, I don't know when that is. Yeah. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> oh, my God. But I kind of alternate between Facebook and Instagram because actually on Instagram, I can have guests. So I can have split screen if um, a comic book guest wants to come on or, like, someone selling comic books wants to come on. That kind of thing. But I alternate, but I usually give heads up on both my pages well in advance of what's to come, what the topic will be, and where it will be. I do other shows, too, like these. Oh, oh my God. The Solitaire Rose Podcast Network is filled with all kinds of audio goodness. First, there's Crazy Comics and Stories. It's been going since 2010. It drops every Monday, and it has me your charming and delightful old Uncle Rap Bastard, and Joe Crazy Writer talking comics, shenanigans, and whatever we're freaking and geeking about. Every Monday morning. It's been going since 2010, and it's available at crazycomics.solitairerose.com. Also on that same feed is the Solitaire Rose Podcast, which is me, again, your charming and delightful old Uncle Rap Bastard, doing interviews, talking about comics, talking about comics history, pretty much talking about whatever I want to talk about. We've also got Solo Joe, where Joe Crazy Rider does a solo podcast, and he hasn't done one in a while, so kick him in the shins to get him started. We also, on that same feed, have Solitaire Rose Series and Review, where we do DVD commentary of older comic book series. That's all at crazycomics.solitairerose.com. I also do a podcast with Wolfie B. Bad at badadvice.solitairerose.com, where we take listener questions and give them bad advice. There's also Novelcast, where I take the novels I've written and turn them into free audiobooks. That's at novels.solitairerose.com. There's also Fantastic Forecast, where myself and Adam Vermillion are going through the entire run of the Fantastic Four, four issues at a time. That's fantasticforecast.solitairerose.com. And if you think that I'm on all of these podcasts, you're wrong. Because Scrabbling Across the West is at scrabbling.solitairerose.com, where musician Dave Cofell and his wife Stephanie travel across America and then sitting down to play Scrabble and talk about the day. That's at Scrabbling Across the West, scrabbling.solitairerose.com. There are always more podcasts at the Solitaire Rose Podcast Network. Be there. Aloha. Yeah, I know. You, you wonder I, when I, he has time. <laughs> oh, we're going to get into that. Um, he needs and, one of those things like Hermione had on, on Harry Potter where he can just wind it up and, hey, I just did 27 podcasts today in the last hour. <laughs> oh, I think Corey knows. I don't think you've ever read Harry Potter, have you? No, I have not. I think I'm the only person on the planet who hasn't. I, although, I, I did watch um, yesterday, the movie Yesterday. And um, in, in that world, there is no tomorrow. Wait, today. Wait, when does this podcast drop? <laughs> uh, th there was no Harry Potter in that world either. So you watched yesterday a week ago. Y yes. So it can't be called yesterday. It should be called a week ago. A week ago, all my troubles went. So no, I don't need Apple Records on our case. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I miss Tom Snyder doing the Tomorrow Show. But you know what we never miss? Joe talking about the Ebays. Joe? Yeah, that's all I've been pretty much doing. Well, I've been trying. I have I have my. I had one day where I sat and I must have put about 100 things on my Ebays. And uh, things are still selling. So uh, uh, go check it out, uh, K-R-A-Y-Z. 
some of the things that I have blown out recently. I had a Red Sonia Vampirella meet Betty and Veronica number 10. Variant Ooh. cover B. Yes, that's just oh. one of the regular covers for you, Norman. Oh, my gosh. What I like to do, of course, I like to be the cheapest guy on eBay, so I sell them fast. For you Deep Space Nine people, if you missed your chance at getting the deluxe edition black and white foil variant cover from 1993 from Malibu, <laughs> don't worry, I got another one. I'll put it up. Uh, occasionally, I sell things that I'm like, uh, I don't know. Like I had a Walt Disney Showcase number 44. Uh, from 1979, I remember this because it had Return from Witch Mountain. And uh, I watched the show, and I, I don't remember the name of the actress, but she was the young uh, girl on there. Of course, being 12 years old, I was instantly in love with her. So when I saw her face on the comic, I was like, I got to buy this, even though it cost a whole 60 cents. <laughs> and the one I have is so cherry mint, but I'm like, you know, what one of my ongoing things, Sabrina, is I've been – slowly purging my collection i say that as i buy like box loads of omnibuses but i uh, about four years ago i got how many boxes did i get rid of Corey? about 20 long boxes of comics yeah still got 50 of them but just things that i'm never going to read again uh and i do love collecting comics but i love selling stuff on ebay even more and uh, I'll, I'll give a shout out to one of our listeners, Matthew J. Whitaker. He actually, he, he did what I asked. If you buy something from me off the Ebays and you tell me you're a listener of this here shop, well, I rummage through my vast accumulation of crap and I tossed in a couple, uh, just little token freebies from him. Uh, he bought uh, the WCW World Championship Wrestling Color and Activity Book from 1999 with, uh, it's unused. wait, wait. wait. Does it come with WCW cologne? <laughs> nope, but it does have Ric Flair on the cover. Woo! How about WCW toothpaste? No, but I did have a WWF stick from when I had the uh, ice cream bars. I Ooh. Didn't give, but ah. I did give them some other cool things. Yeah, I tr trust me. You should see the crap I'm going through. But I'll, I'll talk about that later. Uh, again, if you do buy something from me, I'm, I'm, I'm in a bind. I'm way behind. I'm willing to make a deal. So uh, send me a quick note. Keep me afloat. And if you do I buy have something. I have requests though now. I know. Uh, let me know because I will. Uh, well, two things going on. I'll, I'll give you a little something extra. And if you got questions or you need help on the Ebays and you, you, you've already listened to the uh, podcast I did a couple of weeks ago where I, I waxed nostalgia giving you all my hard-earned knowledge of the ebays uh feel free to drop me a line you can uh, get get a hold of us through our facebook page you can drop me a line through my facebook page or just contact me through ebay system k-r-a-y-z crazy come get some <laughs> and sabrina talked a little earlier about commissions sabrina how can people oh. buy art from you well, okay. There's, I, I used to have a website. Right now I'm working on something new for it. So that's going to be coming back eventually. But right now you can just actually direct message me. I, I prefer you don't show me things. Just, you know, like, just talk to me. Just tell me what you need and not that. I, I will wait, hook wait, you up with art. That sounds pretty. So you did a giant size man thing? <laughs> I put a white big bob off it. I tell you, just <laughs> I knew you read the comic book, so you were very, very safe. But like, um, yeah, I, I take direct messages, but they're business only, which means commission only. Also, anybody who is trying to get into more about comic books and doing some online things during this time that we're kind of locked down, um, I'm open for all of that to make some connections about making some ideas for all that. So those kind of DMs are highly welcome. Uh, the other kind of DMs with a fire emoji and a wink aren't. I, I, prefer, <laughs> I prefer not to see them. I don't know. I'm, I'm very humble. But You're I, saying no I, lemon party here. <laughs> no little eggplant and tiny little water drops is what I'm saying to you. So if you have commissions, 
I do the blank variant covers. I do what you like on those. And I do all different types of media and all different types of panels, canvas, illustration board, watercolor. I'm pretty much for hire for all of it in all sizes and all media. So there we go. Now, is there any place on your Facebook or Instagram page where we can see some of the art you've done? I actually will be posting some art uh, this week coming. Uh, I just kind of in the process of getting some better pictures of it with my new camera. So it's going to have, you know what, um, I've been told to put more of it up. It's just that I have to scan a lot of my older stuff and then like all of that. So it's taking some time. But there's going to be an art area so you can kind of get a feel for my portfolio. So all that's coming. It's just that, like, I've been busy buying high heels. I apologize. Hey, you got to have priorities, damn it. I know. It's seven-inch high heels over the scanner. I apologize for nothing, but I am. So there we are. But the, the artwork is coming. I am for hire for all of that. And also, come to my Instagram. Come to my Facebook. Feel free to stay. And uh, talk comic books. I'm very interactive under my posts. I love a good comic book conversation. I know my crap. So um, everyone is welcome. And you are very, very valued. Putting it out there. Wink. Joe. I'm she sorry. I'm, she's I'm, I'm, very, I'm still, very knowledgeable about comics. I'm, I'm still working on the seven inch heels thing. I, I, who the hell is going to rock me to sleep tonight? God bless you. <laughs> Shall we frighten her with my comic book knowledge? <gasps> I warned her about it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Sabrina, give me a number between 1 and 400. Ooh, 272. 272. Amazing Spider-Man number 272 was written by Tom DeFalco and drawn by Ron Friends. Let me check that I have that correct. Usually I, pay him I believe it was part this. of the gang war story. I believe it was part of the gang war story, but I will find that out. Oh, my. Oh, no. It was a fill-in. I think oh. I got it wrong. What? You owe me a dime. <gasps> no, I, I got it partially right. It was a fill-in. Written by Tom DeFalco, and the pencils were by Sal Buscema and Ron Friends. Ooh, uh -huh. that's pretty darn close, though. I give it to him. And yeah, the I would too. And the was Slide. Whoa. Who, who, I don't even um, know who that is. <laughs> I, I don't think he appeared after that either. <laughs> I'm going to double check, but I think this was his only appearance. He's due for a comeback now. <laughs> in Marvel and DC. He'll be in the next Marvel movie. Okay, no. <laughs> he made a second appearance in uh, Civil War where uh, he was recruited to be part of the bad guys. Holy crap. And he was shot in the back of the head. <laughs> at the end. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was very short nope. limb. <laughs> Appearing in Marvel Zombies any minute now. Oh my gosh. So now we get to uh, my favorite part of the show. No, 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 no. no. French toast with rum and drill. bourbon. No, it's freaking and geeking. Joe, what are you freaking on? Well, we knew it was going to happen. The MCBA did cancel their spring con show. It's supposed to be uh, coming up in May 16th, 17th. So uh, if you, uh, well, I haven't heard much from them. I think they're all just kind of a little bummed out about it, but Better safe than sorry. They, uh, I haven't heard about FallCon yet. Uh, it'll, usually it's in October. Uh, I know people are pushing. Can you do a two-day show? Uh, probably not because it, it takes a lot because you got to get the fairgrounds to uh, agree to it. I don't know if the education building is booked. I know last year it was booked right after FallCon. So they were like, okay, we got to clean up this real quick because then the next group is going to come in and set up the tables. And of course, Half Rice Books does their big clearance sale in the grandstand, so they can't do the grandstand there. But, uh, you know, as time goes on, as uh, we start hearing more, we'll hear more uh, once we get past this. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that should be pretty good. 
Seven inch heels. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all I'm. I, uh, I Sabrina, <laughs> what are you freaking on? What what what's got you down in the dumps? Well, you know, with, with this dead time and stuff, I I have been trying to fill holes in my collection. And every eBay auction I tried, I've lost by a dime lately, and it, I'm so die inside because I almost like on a millisecond lose. So um, I've been looking for a bunch of Mark Brooks uh, Virgin covers as well as Mike Mayhew Virgin covers, and it never fails. Um, it's the third night in a row. <laughs> this like it feels like in the last five that I have been losing every single auction by mere pennies so there we go that has been driving me crazy when you lose i mean are you see sometimes when i lose things i feel good because i made them pay more than i was willing to pay or is it just it's so minute you're like why didn't i just bid an extra dime or something something like that i live with regret so i was like why didn't i go an extra dollar I could have put yeah. five in or something, but um, I try for the best, but then somehow at that last second, they meet my high bid and go a dime more. So it's been kind of like that. So if something's like $10, I'll put it in a bid for 15 and then the person will come in with like $15 and 20 cents or something at that last two seconds. And that's kind of been the routine lately while I've been cooped up trying to fill some holes in my collection you know sometimes i know when i i don't do a lot of i'm i'm, I'm very much i gotta have it now guy so i do a lot of buy it now but when i do see an auction like that if i really really want it you know i'll do like you're saying you're watching it at 15 bucks but i'll have like maybe another four bucks loaded to go so then when it hits that five second mark i'll i'll hit boop i and sometimes it works. Like you see a guy, oh, he bid 16, but I bid 18, so I won. Mm. If they're, you're bidding against a sniping machine, I know I never figured it out. Yeah, that doesn't work. But uh, oh, I hope it works out better. I'm hoping so, too. I, I mean, feel I, your pain. I know. I've been loving up on this Mark Brooks uh, Emma Frost variant on Canny X-Men Virgin cover with her and a tiger. Back to Tiger King. Um, I've been logging up on that and I have lost three auctions for it. So I'm hoping this week I'm watching a few more that I'll actually get to s- scoop it up and put it in my collection and take care of it like a newborn child. And I Anything else you're I, freaking on? You know, um, well, with everything, obviously now closed, locked out and all this stuff, um, the Black Widow wave of Marvel Legends characters is coming out. And, you know, obviously, it's hard. they're not coming to my local store. The only store we have locally open really right near me is Walmart right now. So I haven't seen them on the shelves. I'm hoping, you know, responsibly leaving my house for food that I actually see them on store shelves soon and not have to, like, wait online or something. I, I don't, I'm very impatient when I really, really want something. And I really, really want these Marvel Legends Black Widow figures. So I'm hoping to see them in person and not have to play the waiting game or the auction game to get every exclusive. That kind of deal. Okay, now you throw it to Corey when you're done. Oh, my. Corey, how about you? Well, what am I freaking on? Uh, first off, Saturday I got my last... DCB service shipment for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. In it was the new previews of stuff that may or may not come out within a timely manner. Um, There were some cool comics in there, but uh, this was kind of a slow week for me because there weren't any big hardcovers, weren't any omnibuses, and now there won't be for a while. Omnibus? Omnibus. 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 Um, the second thing I am freaking on, um, as most of you know, I have two jobs. Um, I am essential at both jobs. Oh, the the office job. We work with benefits. Um, all of the temps have been. Whoa. So you're my friends with benefits. (laughs) 
<laughs> Unclean. I've been looking Unclean. for a friend's w- friend with benefits for a long time because, boy, I'd really like to get good dental coverage. I got oyster crackers. So um, most of the temps have been either said that they um, are going to be staying at home or the company has said stay at home and the temps can't work from home. Those of us who are full time can. So they have been um, arm twisting us to work as much overtime as possible to the point where, again, today I got an email that said, and I quote, overtime needed on all clients for all hours. That was it. Wow. (laughs) It's pretty vague. And then my supervisor sent a follow-up note that said, please volunteer for overtime because if you don't, you'll be given mandatory overtime. Wow. And and, uh, I have both volunteered and been signed up for mandatory overtime. So most days I am up at uh, at my desk here at home from 7 a.m. till 6 p.m. I don't mind working from home, but on a lot of these clients, we're basically filling in. So people will ask a complicated question, and um, I am going, so um, please be patient if you're calling and asking questions because, uh, oh, my gosh, anybody connected with healthcare, it's nuts. Um, The group home I work at, has now gone into a level four lockdown. I work part-time at a group home. Well, they they say I'm part-time, but for the most part, I'm there full-time. For developmentally disabled adults. We have gone into a level four lockdown. Now, a level one lockdown means, you know, only, you know, they don't, the clients don't go to their day program. Level two is, you know, no unnecessary trips. Level three is no one they, they don't leave the facility except, you know, to walk around the block. There's no activities, but also no visitors other than staff and medical personnel. Level four means someone is infected. Mm-hmm. At one of the eight houses, one of the clients has COVID-19. I don't work in that house But staff who work in that house have worked in houses I've been in. So now when I go into work, we have to wear personal protective equipment when we're there. So you've heard on the news about all these shortages of there aren't enough masks, there aren't enough gloves, there aren't enough uh, gowns, there aren't enough things like that. Luckily, the group home um, bought this stuff last year because our licensing says we have to have a certain amount of it on hand. So we already had a lot of it. And because many of our clients are over 60, we're on the priority list. But when I go into work, they will take my temperature. And as long as my temperature is not elevated, I will put on the gloves, I will put on the mask, I will put on the um, the gown. Um, we help with everything. What The house I will be working at mostly this week, we have two clients who need to be hand fed. We have to feed them. Um, We have to help them get dressed. We have to change them. We have to give them their showers. And um, that's stressful, really stressful, because um, I don't know what client it is at the house I don't work at, but I know all of those clients. So now I'm very concerned about them. And I'm really hoping that it doesn't spread to the other houses. So I'm kind of freaking about that. I am a little fried to the point where Saturday, well, Friday night, all the clients went to bed early. So I was walking down the stairs carrying a big laundry basket because, Joe, I am the cleaner. Um, <laughs> carrying a big laundry basket. And uh, which is worse, Joe? Taking a step and the, the, thinking that there's one more step? and making your mistake going down a flight of stairs that way, or thinking you've reached the bottom, but no, there's one more step. Which is worse? Hmm. I would say misstep. That happened to me years ago when I was uh, down in uh, Kansas City. No, it was liberal Kansas. It was part of Kansas City was our headquarters. And we were inspecting these these, uh, 
turbo props at Great Lake fly. And it, it was really dumb. We had that, you know, the pilots would get there in the morning and they inspect the plane to go inside. And I go introduce myself. I'm just looking for anything, blah, 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 out of line. And really, I just said, you know, you're the pilot. Did you notice anything out of the ordinary? What they're thinking about, they don't want anybody like stash something in the plane and then try to use it to hijack. Uh, so as I, th these things are about two feet off the ground as the dwarf comes down. So they put a little wooden step there. Well, as I was stepping out, somebody had removed the wooden step. Oh, and I yeah. took that step and I landed square enough not to really mess up my knee, but it hurt. Uh, I did feel good, though, because the next day we got a, a thing out of Kansas City saying, OK, no more inspection of any airplanes. So I took one for the team. <laughs> and uh, fortunately, the, the soup had me go home and I well, home being a hotel. And, uh, you know, I took some ibuprofen and the next day I seemed to be a lot better. But, uh, yeah, it could have been worse. You could twist that knee real bad. So I and heard Sabrina, you said that, you, and I'm like, you wear what? Five inch heels? Seven inch heels? I have uh, seven. Okay. Um, 20, 20 inch heels. <laughs> no, I have. I know. No, no, no. I have seven inch, I have eight inch, and I have ten. <laughs> My heart. So for you, just taking a step and getting your heel wrong would be, you know, even taller than a regular step. Um, I thought that I had reached the bottom of the stairs. I was incorrect. Oh, my gosh. So um, Saturday, my knee was hurting. I could still get around and everything, but my knee didn't feel real good. But then as I'm getting my shower to get ready to go in, I have a migraine, which for me manifests by having what is known as a halo effect. Now, you ever close your eye and kind of press on your eyelid? Oh. And you get that yellowish green? Imagine that, except it's sparkling, your eyes are open, and it covers your whole vision. Oh, my gosh. So I wasn't able to go into work. Now, once that fades, you get this pain of, like, something is behind your eye trying to push its way out. Oh. So um, I couldn't work, and I was all hopped up on goofballs. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I did so also to make that. About that. I got a big old box of comics, and I can't read them because sound and light hurt. Hmm. Thankfully, I felt better Sunday, and I uh, re read comic books. Joe, what are you geeking on? Me? I uh, I'll give a shout-out and a thank you to Tony Isabella, because he put a thing on his page where he was for uh, shops and creators to promote themselves, and he allowed us to drop this silly podcast down. So if you're listening to us for the first time, uh, sorry, guys, Sabrina's not with us every week. But uh, she did tell you how to see her every week. And, of course, we'll, we'll be here next week with something. We'll figure it out. Uh, I was talking a bit about my final run. Basically, I'd had a, a decent couple eBay weeks, and I thought, you know what? I'll go visit a couple shops. My goal was to load up on comic supplies because, uh, believe it or not, uh, I had had – I've been running short on comic supplies. These are things that I had – when I sold my shop uh, way back in 2001. So I'm finally running out of Golden Age bags. I'm finally running out of uh, magazine bags. So I figure I'll go pick these things up. First place I stopped was Dreamer's Vault Games down in South St. Paul. Uh, small shop. Uh, I, I, I gotta tell ya, uh, let, me, let me preface this with my thoughts of, of why I thought of these shops. And, and again, I wish I could have visited more. I just ran out of time and money. When I had my shops, so I had Hot Comics St. Paul, which went from an 800 to a 3,300 square foot store. And it was over 10 years. And then I had a 500 square foot shop called Crazy Comics. If this had happened, the whole diamond thing shut down and then we got a stay in place order, not essential business, whatever. It would have killed crazy comics. I say that because as people know, who've listened to God knows when the hell we talked about it. What killed crazy comics, among other things, was that September. Uh, what year was that, Corey? 2006? Yes. Civil was War August was going on. 
August 2006, yeah. where Marvel said, yeah, Civil War is going to be delayed, so all these books that tie into it are going to be delayed a month. And I pushed all my Marvel books to October, and I looked at my, my, my plan, and I said, I don't have enough to pay rent. And rent was only 500 bucks a month. You know, there are other things, security and utilities. Uh, I just, you know, after talking with my wife, I just threw in the towel and closed it. So for small shops like that, we've got restaurants that just open nearby. Oh, my gosh, my heart bleeds for you guys. Uh, I talked with uh, the, the sole employer there at, at Dreamers Vault. And, you know, I went in and I'm looking, I'm thinking omnibus quality stuff. I want to spend some money. But as with most small shops, I've pretty much got everything that they possibly had. And they didn't have a lot of supplies either. So I picked up, uh, I think, about four, two or three or four bags of, of, of uh, current size. And uh, I talked with the guy there. He said the, the owner was trying to keep everybody on payroll because, again, we're, we're on a two-week shutdown ordered by the governor here in Minnesota. How long the diamond thing goes, nobody knows. Uh, and of course, the the week before our shutdown hit was the last week diamond ship, so the timing hopefully was good. Uh, I actually had visited the source, Comics and Games in Roseville, the day before. They, oh, Sabrina, this is a geek store beyond geek stores. You're talking thirty thousand square feet of comics wow. and games, and just oh, we, uh, yeah. The, you can go look them online. If, if you ever find yourself in Minnesota, we'll take you to this place because it's just amazing. And I dropped a hundred bucks on comics that I didn't. Uh, I had a lot of different variants and, and some things I thought I'd try out and, and uh, you know, just exactly the type of thing Corey was talking about. And then I went and I bought, I, I don't, I, I bought like three bags of comics from them because they, I already bought the, the, the current size, and I uh, they didn't have Golden Age, which I was looking for. I think I got their last magazine bag. And uh, they they don't know what's really going on either because uh, uh, Alliance Games had shut down a week earlier. That's where I think the Di – is is that Diamond owns them? I, I don't know, but that's where a lot of people get their games from. So – and trust me, the source has tons of stuff. So if they wanted to just exist on eBay – or if you want to, I don't even know if they're open for mail order now uh, because the, the stay at home order hit after I visited the source. So I really didn't get a chance to talk to him about it. Uh, again, this was as I was traveling, even as I was talking with, I think, Burl there, uh, the governor was giving the order. So I don't know how they're dealing with it. The last place I visited was uh, Cedar Cliff Collectibles down in Egan. Our, our good buddy, Steve Brown, the man of renown who never has a frown. And never gets me down. Uh, and he he actually had a different attitude on it because that guy is he he's he's another amazing store because he's got things you're gonna look at and go oh my god I forgot about that and you'd probably buy it from him. his prices are pretty good because Corey and I go down there constantly. Uh, he's always always buying discounts when Marvel DC offer them for omnibuses. Uh, we're picking up stuff cheap. I picked up about 50 bucks worth of graphic novel or $50 worth of supplies from him. And he told me, I, I told him, you know, I said, I visited all these other shops and nobody had supplies. And he said, well, the supply chain has basically been choked off about a month ago uh, because I think a lot of that stuff's imported. And so it's already being hard pressed. Uh, to be delivered. So I was just happy to buy it from Steve. I mean, I picked up a couple extra bags. Uh, I picked up a run, which I know I've had in the past, but I eBayed and then I, oh, did I eBay that? The uh, Marvel Paramount Comics, Star Trek X-Men and Star Trek Next Generation X-Men crossover, which uh, again, I think I bought it because I had the book and as a complete run, I was able to like blow it out for 30 bucks on eBay's. And then I had two books in my hands uh, because I figured I was going to – really, I just came down to buy supplies, but I, I bought so much more from him. And uh, I decided to buy the Hellstorm by Warren Ellis Omnibus. Ooh, and, that's a good uh, I, I didn't buy it initially. And, uh, again, he put it at uh, about 47 bucks 
from a seven down from 75, which was a pretty decent deal. Now, here's the thing, though. I was so wrapped up in what I was talking with Steve. I mistook it for a $15 book that I actually had put back on the shelf. So here's Joe's brain going as, as I ring Steve rung up. I'm going, hmm, that's a little high price. But I was just, you know, we were talking so much. And then I got out to the car. When I got home, I'm like, oh, I paid 47 bucks for that. Shh, yeah, well, that's pretty sweet. So it worked out good. And, uh, again, I put my money where my mouth is. Everything's closed now. Otherwise, there are so many more shops I would have hit. And I imagine when these guys do open, if they are able to open, uh, I will probably go back and visit. So just think of any money you spend on my eBay site will be going to support the local shops in town and uh, fill up my stuff, my room with stuff, which I'm sure. Oh, i to be careful. I don't know. don't know if my wife's listening or not. <laughs> the last thing I did, oddly enough, I haven't read any graphic novel. I haven't read any comics because I'm so busy just eBaying and then like. Yesterday, we just had a, a, a rainy down day, and I just kind of didn't I didn't do anything. I was just kind of burnt out. Uh, I have been picking up stuff, though. Uh, I did pick up a book from – it's called Roman and Littlefield. If you look, they're on the Ebays. You can Google them. A book called Stan Lee, The Man Behind Marvel by Bob Batchelor. I, 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 have you heard of this one, Corey? I have not Sabrina? heard of that one. I'm uh, I'm curious to see how it reads. There are so many of these out there, but uh, I got a discount on it because I had ordered their latest book. Somebody did a biography on Weird Al Yankovic, and when I ordered it through uh, through uh, Roman and Littlefield, it was pre-ordered, but it just shipped this week. So I'm like, ooh! So I'll probably crack that sucker out. But in the meantime, I pulled out that old list that uh, people know, the Marvel viewing order. I'm a little sad because they don't have uh, – what was the guy's name? An Fong's Incredible Hulk in it? Or his was just Hulk, right? No, is that considered the canon? Incredible Hulk. Well, Incredible yeah, Hulk, Hulk, I thought. Wait, Incredible Ang Hulk was – Ang, Ang Lee, Lee that's yeah. who was. Yeah. Yeah, because Incredible Hulk's here, but that's the one Ed Norton was in. But they don't have his in here. There's, uh, there's um, only one Hulk movie. Yeah, that one is not considered part of Marvel canon because it was made by Universal. However, General Thunderbolt Ross from that movie has shown up in the Marvel Universe. Okay. Uh, and, of course, the biggest, the biggest, uh, I can't even, I, I'm so clumped, I, I can't even say it. They did not include Howard the Duck. <sighs> what? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing at all. Nothing. Sabrina, are you looking for a new podcast partner? Oh, never mind. Anyway, <laughs> I, I have already gone through just Doctor Strange, Thor Ragnarok, Avengers Infinity War, Endgame. So, and I, oddly enough, I watched Avengers because my goal was I figured I'm just going to watch the Avengers movie. And then this popped up on my Facebook feed and I thought, you know what? I might as well start. And I started, of course, with Captain America, the first Avenger. And the, fir the only thing that really struck me is if you remember in Endgame, when Steve gets pushed into Peggy Carter's office and he sees a photograph, he sees her and sees the, no, he sees the photograph of him on her desk and then sees her through the blinds. That's mm. the photograph of him pre Captain America that she pulls out of the file that uh, Tommy Lee Jones tosses him when they think that Captain America's dead. And I was like, well, that's a nice little bit that I never caught. So I'm looking forward to seeing because some of these I've never seen. I've never seen Incredible Hulk. I've not seen either Ant Man movie. Uh, and it'll be, I don't think I've, I've only seen Captain Marvel once. That's next on the list. And I can't tell you the last man I saw, last time I saw Iron Man. So I'm really looking forward to this. And I'm sure as, as uh, time goes on, I'll be geeking more and more as I rediscover these flicks. So that's pretty much it for me. Now to our guest star, S Sabrina, what type of things are you geeking on? Oh, wow. Well, you know what? Honestly, because of, like, the dead time and stuff, I'm trying to, like, find some trades, and I think I've kind of scouted some, so I'm going to pick those up this week. Uh, like, uh, Black Widow Deadly Origin I wanted to pick up, and I just got the J.G. Jones um, Greg Ruka run on the Black Widow collection. I had Yelena Belova or something. So, Black Widow number two. So, That's I'm kind of, like... Really good stuff. 
Anything oh, by yeah. Greg Ruck is going to be great. Oh, yeah, I have, like, uh, his Wonder Woman, the Hecatea or something. So, like, um, I'm kind of just looking to fill in some holes, so I got some leads on some things. So I've been kind of thinking about all that. That gets me happy. That gives me my happiness. And then I guess I'm I'm geeking on catching up on some of the shows that I've missed, like Agent Carter. I love season one. I never got to see season two. And I believe that's running on Disney Plus or something like that, yeah. Hulu or somewhere. So I'll be it's catching on up Plus. on that. Okay. And um, I don't know, just catching a bunch of documentaries. I love rewatching comic book documentaries like um, Batman and I think Bill, uh, yes. Bill Finger on Hulu. I love that, you know, obviously. Very sad. I, every time I think about it, I freaking cry, but I would love to revisit it. And Chris, Chris Claremont's X-Men, that's on Amazon Video, is amazing. And Image Revolution. So I, I, she makes comics. So I love kind of studying comic books and stuff, and that gets me happy, like, to geek on and things. So I got a lot of thoughts. I have some commissions on my table. And commissions pay for comics, people. So if you're trying to feed my habit... Please, please commission me because not only do your commission, (laughs) yes, not only do your commissions buy me seven inch heels, they buy me my long boxes full of comic books. And she will put pictures of her wearing those heels on Facebook and Instagram. So there's a win win here, people. (laughs) Oh, yeah, what are you talking about? Not at all. Hmm. But yes, I, I mean, look, one hand washes the other people. So definitely, so definitely, if you give me commissions, I kind of like, um, I want to get more into cosplay, and that doesn't have to be at a convention, people. You can be in my room watching me be Wonder Woman lip syncing. We yeah, could like all right now, I'm dressed as the Invisible Man. <laughs> oh my god! But no, that's kind of what I'm geeking on right now, you guys. I I love commissions. I'm that dork that actually gets a happy. When I make people smile with like my work, so um, just kind of all that right now, just kind of just all like, comic book all the time. It sounds like you got a lot to watch. Have you ever watched the show The Toys That Made Us? Yes, actually. Oh, I actually, who, I think his name was Steve something Zilner. He actually talked to me once, and oh. he told me about his episode, and I and I was like, holy crap! It was out of nowhere too. I didn't know him. He was just on my friend list. Um, I, which for- one or- I forgot, but he showed me a you picture. You can always DM me if you can think of it. Yeah, so sure. You, you um, the trigger. I, I didn't talk about it, but there, there was like I watched the Power Ranger one, and what's it interesting about the Power it, Ranger one. I, oh, that would be cool because it has actually a Marvel Comics connection to it, and I'm not going to talk about it because uh, I'll save it for next week. But yeah, if you hadn't seen that show. Any of those shows, those are amazing to watch as well. Okay, because, like, it's, it's crazy because he DM'd me out of nowhere, and it was so cool to have a conversation with him about toys. And he legit took a picture of his huge toy room, and he had, like, full-size arcade things, and I'm like, holy crap. Oh, like, excuse me, like, I, think I'm, I think I'm drooling here. <laughs> exactly. So do, you like, but like, hmm? do you like Transformers? I used to. I was more of a Thundercats person and like oh. things like that. Okay. So uh, the, tra- the Transformers were cool. Um, I see when I was like collecting toys and stuff. Um, God, like Shira, like the new. I I actually love the stuff that Mattel comes out with now, like revisiting all that stuff. But I always miss out on the con exclusive, so they always hit secondary market, and then I can't. You know, like yeah, that, but expensive. exactly. I they had a Shiva doll that had rooted hair and like it was like a twelve inch Barbie and I was like, holy crap! But it was like two hundred dollars and I'm like, no, damn, damn you, cable bill, power and food. Uh, but, stupid but, bills. Yeah, exactly. Stupid bills getting in the way of my collecting. Like food, really. Priorities, people. Priorities. I hate being an adult. <laughs> Ugh. I know. It was so much fun. You, know, you you mentioned something about how you you get your money as a kid. I used to just tell my mom, "Hey, for ten bucks, I'll clean my room." Which in the seventies, <laughs> ten bucks. I mean, at twenty five cents a comic, I could buy a lot of comics. Yeah, 
and like, I never uh, had my, a clean man. <laughs> but like, uh, my father, like I said, he he would buy me comics for every A. So I I left college with like a 3.89 GPA. Damn you, chemistry. But oh. so I was I was an A student. So like I had by the time I was 16, I had 1,500 to 1,600 comic books. Like many, many comic books. So um, a lot of long boxes, a lot of grades. <laughs> but, but that's kind of what I'm geeking on. So, I mean, like just stuff like that. I'm just trying to keep keep busy and keep optimistic and things. And, um, yeah, comic books. So there we go. Gets you through the hard time. Yeah, unless Corey's sleeping. Uh, away. Is that Corey? Yeah, I didn't to Corey. bore him like. I didn't bore him like that. Go Corey, go. All right, go, what I am geeking on. Da, 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 da. You don't want background music? If you have Amazon Prime, you can watch the documentary yeah, do. about Deep Space Nine. Ooh, I'll recommend that. And the beautiful thing about it is it's not just a, okay, here's what we did for Deep Space Nine. No, they break down what they would do if they were to do another season of Deep Space Nine. So they show how the writer's room would break down a story interspersed with interviews with the cast and interviews with the creative people and um, some of the stuff that they dealt with behind the scenes. It's a show called What We Left Behind. It's a 90-minute documentary. It is amazingly good. Um, I believe now, you it remember because I I reviewed that on a geeking while back. Now you remember the yes. one freaking though. You remember the freaking on it. They did Other a separate documentary. That I really, really, really want to see that season now. Oh God, yeah. No, the the freaking is that they did a separate one for the show that they did the uh, triples in, where they took characters from the the. Uh, Original Star Trek oh, and yeah, the, interspersed with the current. That's only available on the DVD, which is collector price now. So I, if uh, unless I I, I look because I noticed when I did Captain America, they do put the extras on. I did not see the extras available on the Deep Space Nine one. So I, I was hoping you might say it was there, but that's the only freaking I have on that. Otherwise, I, I second the Deep Space Nine documentary. Um, the second thing I am geeking on, Joe, do you remember the DC role-playing game from the 80s? I could not tell you what it is, but I do know I had it at one time. I never played well, it. If you would like to see how it's played, on DC Universe there is a new series where they show people playing the DC Universe role-playing game. And it's not, you know, just, you know, four, four people playing. No, uh, one of them is Xavier Woods from the WWE. One of them is Freddie Prince Jr. And um, it's really fun. And it's part of the new DC Universe where they're going to do a bunch of easy and cheap-to-produce reality shows that won't be over on the uh, HBO Plus thing that they're doing so that they can try to get people to stay on <laughs> the DC Universe uh, streaming service. Um, also, the WWE streaming service has put a ton of stuff outside the paywall, including every WrestleMania ever, and a bunch of their documentaries. So if you are at all a wrestling fan and you're one of those people who, uh, I, I, I can't leave the house, I don't have anything to do, you can watch every WrestleMania ever for free. Um, my local library has put has uh, basically purchased the Great Courses, which is uh, online. Um, you'll you'll see ads for it on, on the Facebook all the time. It's history and science and stuff like that. Video courses on that; those are all free from my library. You'll want to check if your library has that stuff free. And guess what? Your library may have a free streaming service such as Canopy, K-A-N-O-P-Y, or other streaming services. Go to their website, to your local library. Um, they have ebooks, they have audiobooks, um, magazines. You, you can read and read and read, and many of them have graphic novels, trade paperbacks, collections of stuff that you may want to read, but don't, you know, 
you're going to read it once and then not read it again, rather than the stuff that you read over and over that you want to own in your collection. Comic-wise, I actually got a lot read this weekend, including all four volumes of Greg Rucka's Stumptown, which the T ABC TV series is based on, about Dex Perios, who is a kind of a minorly... Okay, she's an unsuccessful private detective with a lot of personal problems. It's a Greg Rucka book, okay? Everybody in a Greg Rucka book has personal and psychological problems. Um, there are four trade paperbacks. They are all fantastic. I read all four of them. I got all caught up on Grant Morrison and Liam Sharp's The Green Lantern. Um, Liam Sharp is an artist I've liked ever since he was in Vertigo on the book Testament. His science fiction stuff, it reminds me of a much less abrasive um, – oh, who's the guy who draws um, uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen? Kevin O'Neill. It's a much less abrasive Kevin O'Neill. His stuff is just as detailed, just as weird, but it doesn't have that weird disturbing quality that Kevin O'Neill's art has. I like Kevin O'Neill's art, but when you look at his art, it's disturbing. And it's not just me who believe, who says that, because back in the 80s, he did an issue of Green Lantern that the Comics Code rejected. And yeah. um, when DC Editorial went, well, why did you reject this? They said, you know, so that we can change it to get through. And they said, no, his art's just disturbing. Mm. We, we just find his art really disturbing. Um, he also did Nemesis the Warlock and other books like that. His art is very harsh and angular. And if you've read League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, you know what I'm talking about. N nothing in that is pleasant. But it works for the stories he does. In, so when I see Liam Sharp's art on The Green Lantern, it's got that same level of detail without that feeling of being uncomfortable when you look at it. Um, and of course, it's not me with some time off without some Kirby. I read again for the bajillionth time the Silver Surfer graphic novel that Stan Lee and Jack Kirby did in 1978. Joe, does Joe know what's the story behind that graphic novel? It's, it's almost the origin of, of uh, Silver Surfer coming to Earth, but uh. Without the Fantastic Four in it. Um, it was also, if you have the original printing, it was copyright Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Oh. It was Marvel's first graphic novel. It was kind of commissioned by um, Fireside Books, who published Origin of Marvel Comics, Son of Origin of Marvel Comics, those big books in the 70s. And what it was, it was the movie pitch that they put together for a Silver Surfer movie that Marvel came very, very close to having made in 1979. Hmm. But the financing fell apart. And if you look online, you can see where they did some test shots of the Silver Surfer in costume on what looked like a floating surfboard. It was going to be based... Basically, here's your movie pitch, here's the script and everything. Marvel printed it, well, Fire, Fireside printed it as a graphic novel. And while it wasn't the last thing Kirby did for Marvel, it was the last thing that was published until um, they took some of his storyboards for the Fantastic Four comic book and printed them in uh, Fantastic Four 236 and didn't pay him for it and... Um, he got really, really, really mad about that. So it was the last kind of official Stan Lee, Jack Kirby thing that was ever completed. Um, every time I go back and read it, it just is amazing in that it's the same story without the Fantastic Four, without the superhero stuff, and much more of Jack Kirby's um, man not understanding the cosmic and what God's
basically that came out of the new gods. So that has been out of print for a while. Hopefully Marvel puts it back in print when everything comes back. And that's what I was doing on my um, two days off. I, I don't have two days off again until this is over. So, Or you drop your laundry again. Well, there is. it wasn't my laundry. You know, I could come over with a few omnibuses and take out your knee. Oh, my God. I'd still just offering from home. Oh, damn it. Yeah, I was going to say I could cut the phone lines, too, but I don't want to be accused of vandalism. Well, you can cut the phone line because, you know, I, I don't use my landline. But if you cut my cable line and my Internet. Dude, I'm not a monster. Thank you. Believe it or not, kids. You've listened to us blather on about funny books for an hour and a half. Holy crap. Good for you. And as we say every week, the comic we like the least, we still like better than the comic that you like the most, Joe. I'll throw it to our guest first. Sabrina? What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how this woman is. What am I supposed to do now? What are you asking? Say goodbye. Oh! Bye! <laughs> then you throw it I... to me. Oh! Go ahead, Joe! You realize I'm going to make that my ringtone. Go ahead, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm still having problems with this 10-inch heels. You know, I bought some shoes from a drug dealer the other day, but I was tripping all day. <laughs> Corey, get my music.